So I had a question at the break time, just to clarify. Tax. I should have written tax as a negative number. We had, for example, a minus 15. I wrote 15 and 5, right? But tax is a negative number. Okay? So higher tax, higher tax, lower tax. Right? Higher tax is going to be a higher cash flow or lower cash flow? More tax, higher cash flow or lower cash flow? More tax is going to be a lower cash flow. Okay? If we pay more tax, we have less cash. Okay? If we pay less tax, we have more cash. Okay? So that's why it's this number is smaller. It's 5, this number is 15, but this one means more cash. Okay? Lower tax, tax is a negative number. Okay? Income is 20, minus tax. Okay? Tax is a negative number. So, the point is we want to pay less tax. If we have depreciation, we pay less tax and we have a higher cash flow. So, depreciation has the cash benefit. So, we talked about the differences between accounting earnings and cash flows, managing working capital on page 67 and 68. Uh, so we're on page 69, converting estimates from accounting earnings to cash flow. There's two more things we need to talk about. So, we already saw this part. We have our operating income after taxes. We need to add depreciation minus capital expenditure minus change in working capital. We talked about these things. The next things we need to talk about is sunk cost and allocated cost. Okay. So we have to think about those things. So first let's talk about sunk costs. What does sunk mean? Sunk in English. Sink, sank, sunk. Under the ground, sunk, here's the ground, somebody sinks under the ground. Okay? So sunk cost is a cost that's under the ground, we're not going to get back. Do you know when the ship, the ship, Sinks under the water. <laughs> Can we usually get the sink ship back? Can we get the ship back? Use it again? It's sunk, it's finished, it's gone. Okay? That's the meaning of some cost. So any expenditure that has already been incurred, incurred means uh, we, we already had the expense, and cannot be recovered is called a sunk cost. Okay? So I can see a couple of students are still using their phones and one student didn't uh, wake up since the break time. Can you wake her up? Yes, so the class has restarted. So uh, a test market for a consumer product and R&D expenses for a drug company are good examples. Okay, do you understand test, test market? Test the market. We test the market first to see if people will like our product or not. Okay? We make some test product and we give it to the give it to the people. So can you let them know the class has begun again? To also the other student. Maybe it's a cultural difference. Uh, maybe in Korea some students may sleep in the classroom, but the Western culture you can't sleep in the class, right? One time when I was in the university, one guy was sleeping in the class. The professor came over and started shouting at him right next to his ear. <laughs> Threw him out of the class. Right? Do you understand? So, the Western culture, sleeping in class, not acceptable. Okay? So, you need to pay attention. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> we do the test. We spend money on testing for the consumers, okay? That's a sunk cost. Whether we decide to do the project or not to do the project, we're not going to get that money back. Okay? That was testing. r and expenses for a pharmaceutical company. Similar. When analyzing a project, some costs should not be considered since they are not incre incremental. 
we talked about in the last class, right? We don't, we have to think about just from now forward, from now forward, are we going to make a profit or not? Not, we've already spent that money, it's gone. So if I make a profit from now forward, then we should do that. So for example, let's say that I spent, I spent $5,000 already, and now I have a choice. I'm going to make a profit of just 1%, which is going to be $4,000. Okay? This is the past, this is now. Okay? If I run the project now, I make $4,000. I already spent $5,000. Should I take the project or not? Yes, right? Anyway, I'm going to make $4,000. At least I'll only lose $1,000. If I don't take this, I lose all the 5,000, okay? So when we're at deciding whether to take the project or not, we have to be forward-looking, okay? So it's a well-established finding in psychological and behavioral research that managers find it almost impossible to ignore some costs, okay? Managers find it hard to ignore that they already spent this money. Let's say that I'm, I'm doing the project and it's going to lose money, minus 1,000, right? Should I take the project? No, but some managers are going to say, but I already spent a lot of time and 5,000 and a lot of money on this project, okay? I want to do the project, psychological thing. We talked about it in the last class. Do you have that psychological thing? You spent a lot of time on something? money, so you don't want to give it up, even though it mightn't be the best decision for the future. Okay. So, a consumer product, so discuss this with your partner, a consumer product company has spent 100 million on test marketing. Looking only at the incremental cash flow and ignoring the test marketing, the project looks like it will create 25 million in value for the company. Should it take the investment, yes or no? Now assume that every investment that this company has shares the same characteristics, right? The firm will clearly not be able to survive. What is the solution to this problem? So I'll discuss the two questions with your partner. Second question. If the firm does this all the time, 100 million on test marketing and just makes 25 million profit, is that a problem? Yes. The firm is not going to be able to survive if it always does this. So, what's the solution? Does anyone have an idea? What's the solution? 
uh, don't do researches, just make this product will, which will give you 25 million a year. Yes, but we have to do, unfortunately, we have to do research. <laughs> we have to do a testing. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, it mightn't sell and, yeah. Just, what? Just give up. <laughs> Watch TV. <laughs> Just live with your mother and play computer games all day. <laughs> Eat noodles. Right? <laughs> your mother starts to nag you. <laughs> ah, go away. <laughs> I'm playing computer games. Give me some noodles. <laughs> Wash my clothes. <laughs> Good life, right? <laughs> so maybe we can just do that instead. Right? Okay, that's one idea. <laughs> but another idea is we have to look at the big picture. So the just somebody in the company has to be looking at the big picture. Do you understand big picture? Yeah. So it means that if we are constantly doing this, then we need to change the way we operate. So maybe we wouldn't just cut the test marketing, but we'd maybe do a little bit less. Okay. Uh, we would uh, try to adapt, you know, the way that we do business. Okay. So just we have to see the big picture, so that we're not always doing this. Okay? It doesn't happen again and again and again. We're not in that situation. But when we're in that situation, we have to be forward looking. So do you have any question about sunk cost? No? So let's look at allocated costs. These are on page 69 and 70. So we mentioned briefly the last time, allocated costs. What does allocate mean? Distribute. Okay, divide so I allocate you two apples, I allocate you three apples, and four apples. Okay? So allocated costs is costs from a centralized pool which is given to the project. So we have Disney. Right? Disney, HQ. Do you understand HQ? In Florida. Disney has their toys. Theme park. Okay? They have media. Theme park is split up into Rio, Paris, okay, so on. So how much does Rio have to pay for the Disney headquarters, for the CEO, for the company jet, okay, for those kind of things? That's the that. allocated cost. The cost is allocated across different businesses, probably based on their revenue or value added to the company. Okay, you make a lot of revenue, you pay more. You pay less revenue, you pay less. Okay. So sales or earnings is a common choice for revenues. For large firms, these allocated costs can be significant. They can be quite big, right? And they can result in the rejection of projects. What do you think? Should we regret, reject a project because of allocated costs? Here or not? Should we reject the project because of the allocated cost of the HQ? or not? Are those costs going to exist anyway? Or not? Hands up who thinks we should ignore. Ignore these costs when making the decision. Hands up. Who thinks we should consider this cost? Right? Who thinks we should use this cost to reject the project? If this cost is too high, reject the project. Okay, so of these costs, we have to decide, divide them into fixed and variable costs. The fixed cost is going to exist anyway. So there may be some cost that the company has to pay, which is bit extra because of our project. For example, the CEO has to fly in the company jet to Rio. That's a general administrative cost, which is caused by our project. Variable one, right? But fixed one, anyway they have to pay the CEO, anyway they have to pay the CFO, anyway they have to pay for the building in Florida, the rent on the building. That's a fixed general administrative cost. So we divide them into fixed and variable. And the fixed cost is going to exist anyway, whether we do our project or not. So should that be included in the decision making? No, right? That's going, that cost is going to be there anyway, whether we do the project or don't do the project. It's a little bit like some cost. 
Okay? So these costs are not incremental and would exist anyway. This makes the firm worse off. So only the incremental component of allocated costs we use should show up in project analysis. <coughs> so we have to break the general element of spread of costs into fixed and variable components. That's what we need to do. So uh, I wonder if you can do this calculation, right? Uh, assume you have these time series of revenues and GA costs for a company. Okay, year one, this revenue, this general and administrative cost. Okay, year two, revenue goes up by 200. General and administrative cost goes up by 20. Year three, revenue goes up by 300. General administrative cost goes up by 30. Okay, can you tell me what percentage of the general and administrative cost is variable from these numbers? Okay, so think about it for a minute. It's like a maths problem. Okay. What percent is fixed and what percent is variable? time-weighted cash flow, which is, uh, which is uh, the present value. Do you remember the present value equation? What is NPV? Huh? So I want to find the present value equals what? Future value what? Multiplied by or divided by? Future value divided by? One plus I. Five multiplied by the interest rate. Okay, we should understand that, right? So cash flows across time cannot be added up. We need to bring the cash flow back to the same point in time before aggregation. Okay? So the process of moving cash flows through time is dis called discounting. Okay? Discounting. So we have this formula. Okay? Simple cash flow is cash flow in the future over 1 plus the interest rate, right? Just the annuity, the growing annuity, the perpetuity. Do you like these equations? No. Hmm? Do you like to see that? They're like friends? Hmm? No, why not? Hmm? 
So net present value is an important one. It's one way of calculating all the cash flow in today's value from the project. So we already did that kind of a question one time. We said the project makes this cash flow in year one, in year two, in year three. What's the present value? Okay. So NPV is the sum of the present values of all cash flows on the project. So we find the present value of each of the cash flows and add them together, the sum, okay, including the initial investment, with the cash flows being discounted at the appropriate hurdle rate. So I is going to be the cost of capital. Okay? I is the cost of capital, hurdle rate. Uh, cost of capital, so here. The decision rule is except if the net present value is greater than zero. We accept the project. We're also going to look at payback and internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is the discount rate that sets the net present value equals to zero. So uh, it is the percentage rate of return based upon the incremental time weighted cash flows. So in with the IRR, we try to find a high. Okay? We make the NPV zero. If NPV is zero, solve for I. What's I? Okay? We can't do that mathematically. We need to use a computer program. It's too complicated. Okay? And then we find what the I is. And then if I is higher than our cost of capital, we accept the project. So they're quite similar. A little bit different, we'll talk about, but quite similar ways of making the decision. Uh, of course, this one, N NPV, is in cash. IRR is percentage. That's the main difference, but uh, we'll talk about that uh, more uh, later. Right? So, when at the end of the cash flow, we need to have a salvage value. Okay? This is the expected proceeds from selling all of the investment at the end of the life. It is usually equal to the book value of the fixed assets and the working capital. So, <coughs> if we have a project with a very long life, like Disney, uh, we compute the cash flows for the reasonable period, usually 10 years. 10 years is the reasonable period. And then we compute what we call a terminal value. Terminal value is everything after 10 years until the end of the project. Last time you guys said you weren't comfortable with just 10 years for the park. So we, make, we calculate a terminal value. This is the present value of all the cash flows that occur after the estimation period. So assuming the project lasts forever and the cash flows grow 2% a year, then we can make the calculation, right? Uh, we saw this was in the time value of money for calculating present value of a perpetuity, cash flow in year 11, over cost of capital minus the growth rate. So in Disney's case, we made this calculation, and we found the terminal value to be at $10 billion. Okay, so this is the cash flow in year 11, uh, and then that is divided by cost of capital minus the growth rate. So then, then we calculate the NPV for Disney. So what we have for Disney is we went through, we, we have our operating income after tax to change the cash flow, minus capital expenses, minus change in working capital, plus depreciation, plus the sunk cost, added back in the sunk cost, we spent this much before the project, so we're not going to consider the sunk cost, so we have to add it back in, because the sunk cost was included in accounting. And we added in the, just the fixed general administration costs. Okay? So we ended up with the cash flow number minus 2,000, minus 1,000, minus 800. Okay? Until the end. So we have every year we have our cash flow for 10 years. And then we have terminal value. Everything after 10 years we saw was 10 billion. So after calculating all of those cash flows, we put it all like this. So this is just sideways, right? Year one was minus 2,000, minus 1,000, and so on, okay? And then we can see, this is a big number. The terminal value is a big number, okay? Every year after 
the tent here. So we find the present value using this equation for each year. Okay? Uh, present value equals future value over 1 minus, what was Disney's cost of capital? 0 0.067, something like that, right? 6.7% we said for the theme park, okay? And then by the time. So we use that calculation and we get the present value for every year, okay? So for example, in year 10, 609, this number is not worth that much money in today's money. It's just worth 4 billion in today's money, okay? Uh, you know, in year six, 500 million in year six is worth 300 million in today's money, using this discount rate. So we add all of these together, and we get 2.877, 2.877 billion. So what do you think? Take the project or don't take the project? Build Rio Disney or don't build Rio Disney? We added all the cash flows, present value of all the cash flows together, even including this was the money we spent. We spent a lot of cash at the start, right? And we came up with this positive number. Take the project or don't take the project? Take the project, right? What we're saying here is we're looking at all the cash flow. Cash at the start of the project, cash is going out. That's normal. Okay? Then we start to make the profits, and we're going to make more profits for 10, 20 years, 30 years, okay? So we want to bring all of that money back to today's value so we can make a decision. So we brought all of the money back to today's value, added it together, is it positive or negative? If it's negative, no, don't take the project. If it's positive, yes, take the project, okay? Do you understand that idea? So this makes the project argument that the project should be accepted. The positive net present value suggests that the project will add value to the firm and earn a return in excess more than the cost of capital. By taking the project, Disney will increase its value as a firm by 200 or 2.8 uh, billion. So we should take the project. So. Uh, let's look at, at some questions in our book, just to practice the, uh, what we just studied, some of the things. Okay. Uh, so the first one is calculating the cash flow. So I think, here's the equation for calculating the cash flow from the income statement. So. It's going to be income after tax, EBIT 1 minus T is income after tax, plus depreciation, minus change in non-cash working capital, minus capital expenditures. Okay, that's a simple one. We want, we can add in here, plus pre-project sum costs, plus uh, allocated costs. But not every project has those. So that's the simpler equation. So, uh, if you look at the question four in your book, page uh, 91, okay. we're getting closer to the end of the book. So page 91, here we can see this is the income statement, okay? Income statement, and here you have to change to cash flows. So we just did for example for Disney. Okay, we changed, the, we have the income statement information and we changed it to cash flows. Okay, so that's what you need to do now. I've put, made a box here with each thing. Plus depreciation, minus change in working capital, plus salvage value. Okay, so... <coughs> we can try to do this... Uh, Equation. <laughs> so look back at the information we looked at in, in the book. Uh, 
wrote an example in the book on page 73, 72. The same thing, right? Changing from. Uh, here we changed from the accounting to cash flows. Okay, on page 72 we changed from accounting to cash flows. this part at the, at the start of the question, right? We see the initial investment here, 1,500, okay? That was, depreciation was 500, 500, 500, right? So there was a capital expenditure of 1,500 at the start. And the working capital is 10% of revenues, okay? So for example, revenues is 1,500. So year one working capital is 10% of 1,500, 150. Okay, so but it's the change in working capital we need to. So look at the, I think if you look at the example on page 72, it can help you, right? So read the question, look at the example on page 72. <coughs> Is there anybody, two people that doesn't have a book?
The sound and value is going to be just the working complement. The light the other question. So in this question, just the salvage value we mentioned just earlier in the class is the working capital, okay? What, the total amount of working capital that's left at the end, okay? We're going to sell that at the end. So that's the salvage value. Thank 
for tax So I asked two or three questions about the working capital, right? Working capital we need to buy before the business starts, okay? For example, we need to buy a certain amount of bicycles to put in our shop. Otherwise, we can't open the shop. Okay, so working capital starts.